Mm -hmm. And we're rolling! Quick demonstration on how limited shoulder turn is not good for the driver. Holy, I'm gonna call that a slice. Pulled it to the left and it cut back to the right. 153 yards with the driver. Again, I want to hit shots that are relatable to the people that I'm working with. Dr. Jake Berman here, inventor of the Berman Method, where we specialize in helping golfers over the age of 60 hit the ball farther with the driver. A lot of the people that I work with start off with a shot very similar to that, where they're hitting it 150 yards, maybe 175 yards, maybe 200 yards, but it's a very similar shot where they tee up to the ball and they go back and they just can't get the shoulder turn that they're looking for. So they're doing all sorts of crazy little back bend things to try to increase their shoulder turn. So let's just go over a handful of things that can really quickly increase your shoulder turn. Very simple, right? First one is down on the ground, right? We're on all hands and knees. We can still see good video, right? We're going to sit back a little bit. So I'm just sitting back a little bit and then I'm just going to take one hand and I'm going to reach as far as I can possibly go. Use your fingers to pull yourself a little farther. Breathe. Exhale. Uh, try to go a little farther. Breathe. Exhale. Uh, try to go a little farther. Don't let this arm bend. Try to keep it as straight as you can, okay? And then you're going to do the same thing the other way. Reach the other way. Breathe in. Exhale. Uh, what that's going to work on is trying to get the thoracic spine to rotate a little bit more. Next thing that we want to do is when we got the thoracic spine like this, so your upper shoulders are just rounded, your chin's out like this, you're not going to get the shoulder turn. So we've got to get your upper back up. I know I've showed this one in the past, but I'm telling you, this is one of the most beneficial ones you could possibly do. Thumb roller, get down on the ground, support your head, reach back. Ah, oh, yeah. Support your head. Don't do a back bend with your neck. This is bad. Okay, support your head. Reach back for the ground with your shoulders, not your neck. Roll a little bit. Reach back to, for the ground with your shoulders, not your neck. Okay? You want to just keep rolling on this thing until you find a spot where it's like, oh, that's tight. And then just stay there. So get on the discomfort, then off the discomfort on the discomfort, off the discomfort. Focus on breathing while you're down there. You can stay down there for 10, 20, 30 reps of that until it really starts to loosen up. Then after you do that, since you're already on the ground, go ahead and lay on one side like this, right? Take this bottom arm, grab a hold of this top leg, take this arm up to the ceiling, breathe in, Exhale as you rotate back. Oh man, that feels so good. Don't let this leg come up like that because we're not, that defeats the purpose. Okay, so this locks you down here. Breathe in. Exhale as you go back. All right, breathe in. Exhale. Yeah, breathe in. Exhale. Man, that feels really good right there. So do 10 on this side, then flip around and do 10 on the other. All right? Now, you might have to turn the video for this one. This is another one of my favorites right here. I'm gonna get on the ground, all right? My right arm is against the wall right now. My left knee is up. So my right arm's against the wall. My right knee is on the ground, so put a pillow down or something so you're not hurting your knee. Hands go against the wall. Right hand never leaves the wall. Breathe in. Exhale as you rotate back. All right? The number one thing that people try to do to compensate is they let this knee rotate out too. Don't do that. So if you got to put something in between your knee and the wall so you know that you're not rotating, just grab a pillow or grab a half foam roller, just grab something so that you keep pushing here 
and you rotate back. Oh, yeah, that feels good. We're really trying to open this chest up, which is going to help increase our shoulder turn. All that work is going to help us go from here to getting up there. We're not ready for this yet. So the things that we've done so far are passive mobility drills, trying to work on flexibility. After we improve our flexibility, then we want to work on our stability. That means the muscles that will keep that range there. So I like to call this next exercise the Robert De Niro, right? Because it's like this. Elbows against your sides, palms up, get your chest up as tall as you can, then bring your hands out to the side as far as you can, keeping your elbows at your sides. Don't let them flare out, don't let them do any of this crazy stuff. Keep them right at your sides. Bring your hands out as far as you can, trying to open your chest up using the muscles in your back. And I call it the Robert De Niro because it's like, you talking to me? You talking to me? I know you ain't talking to me, right? One of those old mobster movies, right? So we're just using those muscles in your back to pull those hands back as far as you can. Pull that belly button in. I don't want you arching your low back. Belly button in, hands back. Ah, oh, yeah. Feel those muscles working, baby. Woo! That's what I'm talking about. 20 of these bad boys after you do these other mobility drills. Then we do our stability work. Get those muscles working. That's going to help with your shoulder turn. Because after all that, then we get here, tee everything up. This is where we started our posture. Then I should be able to get my chest up. So when I started here, that's how much shoulder turn I can get without moving my hips. But when I get my chest up, look at that. 100% increase in shoulder turn just by getting my chest up, thoracic spine rotation. So then we're going to keep that mobility, nice easy swing.